Hey guys, my name is Evan and welcome to Country View Acres. So today me and Rebecca are out here. We're gonna try to finish this pasture fencing. Hopefully we'll get this last section done. So we've got this slight 45 right here. That's 16 feet long. We're gonna put a stock panel there. And then from this corner, that direction, we've got I think like 66 feet of fence. So it's a pretty short run and then there'll be a gate past that. And that's what we're gonna be trying to do today. We'll, we'll try to get that gate hung. We got a gate on the other side to hang today as well. And then once that's done, I think we're gonna be ready to start trying to move the steers in here, start getting the equipment like their water in here, maybe some hay in here for them so that we can move them into this place. But hopefully we'll finish up the, the pasture fencing today. So this little 45 degree corner here, it's only 16 feet long. And we've got our bottom barbed wire here. So to make sure this stays tight, I just tied it off to both sides and I'm gonna connect it in the middle with a gripple that's made for barbed wire. Well, anyway, there we go. I did have to strip out some of these barbs so that I could slide that gripple down. I think I stripped off about three or four barbs. So if you watched our last fencing video where we did the, the stock panel fence, um, we ended up running this high tensile wire across and that was basically something for the, the stock panel to lean to and we could clip it to that and it would help keep the stock panel from nice and straight really instead of being wavy. So we're going to do the same thing here in this corner because this is exactly 16 feet. Stock panel is going to fit in here perfectly. So we're just going to put a few pieces of this high tensile in here just to tie it to that. So we've got this stapled off at the correct height so it'll match up with the stock panel. And we're gonna start tightening this up. Hopefully this is actually gonna pull all these, these posts together right here. We've got a little bit of a gap in this brace or this horizontal post. So on this run of, of bottom barbed wire, we left it really loose. So we're just gonna cut this here in the middle and then splice it together with a gripple. And then that'll be the way, you know, we tighten this up. You got two more inches. <laughs> it looks like it should be. That's right. You got it right there, okay. 58 inches. Okay. So I think we've got everything ready now so we can try to start stretching this section of field fence. So I think I said the, the length wrong earlier. It's actually, I think 74 feet from this end to the other end, and that'll be our shortest run yet. We're gonna use those T-clips like we did last time, wrap around the post instead of trying to tie them off. And um, we've only got a partial roll of fence, so I'm not sure if it's even long enough. Uh, we're gonna roll it out, hopefully it's long enough. If not, we have a few little pieces here and there. We might have to splice them on to make it reach. We'll just have to see.
I'm off my pulley. See that? Yeah. That ain't good. I know. Trying to release it. Well, on my come along, my cable came off the pulley and it got jammed in here, so I'm trying to get it unstuck. We've got it loosened. It's still tight on this side. Oh, I'm afraid it's going to spring back on us. I mean, that, that thing is about to shear. Maybe I can shear that pin there. Well, hey, we're a little looser. Let's go see. Oh, the pin's out. There we go. Well, that was the first time I had that happen having the wire get off the pulley and in between over there. But we got taken apart. We had to put new cotter keys in it and everything should be ready to go. We'll get this tightened up and maybe we'll finally get this tied off. It's getting kind of late tonight. We were, we're wanting to get this done. So every time I stretch fence, I always have the question of why don't I use the tractor and pull it past the fence post and then staple it down to the end post hard, cut it off and tie it off, tie it off to the post. Well, the main reason I don't do that is because if I would have stretched this past here, it would have been stapled down hard on this one side. So instead of it being wrapped around and the slip not working when you tie it off, it's gonna just pull on the side of the post. And when you release that tension, it, it actually pulls on the post and it starts to turn it because it wants to take where it's pulling right here on the side. It wants to pull it toward it. And I've actually had it twist enough that it, the brace, the horizontal brace would wanna pop out. And that's the reason why I don't pull past with a tractor and staple it off hard. And that's the reason why I do it this way. And the other reason, of course, is it, it tensions this brace up. And uh, I usually have pretty good success doing it this way. Yeah, I'm definitely happy with these T-clips. Man, I can get this way tighter around the post and tying that off by hand. And then if you look at this, this section right here, this is actually fairly tight and I haven't even released the tension on this yet. So it makes me pretty confident, you know, that this is gonna end up staying tight. And look how tight this is right now. I mean, this is good looking, I like it. So it's the next day now. We've got the, the fence is stapled to the wooden posts and it is tied off to all the T posts. And it, I don't know how well you're gonna see this in the video, but man, that, that fence looks pretty good, especially for as short a run as it is. Uh, I think it turned out great. It's nice and tight. So now the only two things we got left is we've got two gates to hang and then I still have the 16 foot stock panel to put over there. So probably do that last. I'm gonna start with the gates. Just trying to get the height of where I should drill this hinge pin. All right, we got the first gate hung. So I did have to screw the top hinge in quite a bit. And I had to unscrew the bottom hinge so that it uh, laid out right for the other side. And uh, got it to where it's swinging. It does hit the trees. We're gonna have to cut some of these trees down, but you can see we should be able to back in here. If I cut this tree down, all these trees right here, 
I could back a trailer right in here and swing that gate open and back the trailer right into this gate opening. And that gives us another place to load. Now, when I put all these posts in here, I did all these after work of an evening. So I was kind of in a rush. You know, I just got off work and I was trying to do it in a few hours after work. My posts aren't completely straight, but this opening right here, I didn't get it exactly the way I wanted it. I wanted to be able to put a two-way gate latch in here so I could swing the gate either direction. Now, obviously I, I was about four to five inches off from being able to do that. So there's no way that's gonna happen. So I just put the chain on here, got it stapled to the post to hold it in place. And then we can just carabiner that shut. And I think that'll work out. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. We're gonna go ahead and put the other gate in now. All right, we got our gate that goes uphill in. Um, I'm gonna guess there's probably a foot of elevation change at least in this gate. So I probably could have, you know, another alternative was I could have mounted this higher on this end and put it across and then put some dirt or some rock or something in on this side to help fill the gap under the gate. That would have been an alternative way to do it. May have looked better if I would have done it that way. This is a pretty extreme uphill gate really. So um, if we look at the, this was almost too much for the hinges to be able to actually make it go uphill because you end up with such a wide opening down there. A lot of that screw is sticking out and then up here, the screw is sticking in. And it did take me a, another try, a third try on this top one to get it where the gap was good and the gate opened up. So finally got it. So we look at this side, you know, we do have a little bit of a gap here, but then at the bottom we're practically touching. So yeah, this, uh, I, I will have to say that uh, this one may have been better if I would have went ahead and raised that end and came across and just filled some dirt in over here. Sure would have looked better. A latch would work better on here if I would have done that. So not real sure if I'm happy with the way this one turned out. Um, every time you hang one, you kind of learn a few things. And I think on this one, I definitely, the, see all the other ones are mostly, mostly level. Um, so I just follow the contour of the ground and, and it's pretty close. This one is definitely uphill and uh, I could have done it differently. It would have looked better. All right, we just got one thing left and that's to put that 16 foot stock panel in. So we're gonna go grab that and uh, get that stapled to the posts and get it hog ringed to the high tensile wire. And then we're done. All right, our new pasture area here is finished. Uh, I think all the fencing is finished now, for, at least for now, some of it's temporary. So the fence on that side over there, it does zigzag. And we've got that fence row to clean up back there, the old fence row that's behind it. We have that to clean up, a junk pile to clean up, and eventually we'll, we'll get that fence straightened out. And then on this end over here, we're probably gonna eventually rework it and tie it to that barn. I want that barn to be half hay on one side and half livestock barn on the other so that they can get inside. We can lock them up at night, uh, somewhere they can shelter out of the shade. So that's something we'll end up doing later is uh, tying that, that barn into this fencing. And then on that side of that, all the trees over there is 12 acres. We're eventually gonna fence that in and that'll be connected to this and the livestock barn. And that'll be actually our main pasture once we get that 12 acres fenced in. So this isn't the biggest pasture in the world. This is like, this is gonna be more of a feedlot maybe later, um, somewhere to put them in the winter time or something. But uh, this is only about an acre inside of this fence, but it'll all tie into the grand scheme, the grand plan of how we're gonna have our pastures laid out, connected with the livestock. That's gonna be a livestock barn back there. And this is gonna be our main pasture area. And then where the existing pasture is, that'll probably stay mostly 
the small animals in that one. And we could still rotate the steers through that, but uh, that's kind of the plan is this, this side over here that isn't, that, and all that over there that isn't developed yet, that's gonna be the main part of our livestock operation. So we're not gonna end up moving the steers into this pasture today. Rebecca already has headed back to start getting cleaned up because we have a wedding to go to this afternoon and this evening. So I need to be doing the same thing. So I need to get all the tools picked up, put away, and get cleaned up. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.